baby forums members like to nerd out, and I've got the uh, the ultimate nerd in front of me, um, Stacey Spears. Everybody will know him from Spears and Munsell. Um, why are you here at CES and why are you with LG? So I. LG helped me actually bring, or is helping me bring my new disc to market. One of the big things LG has done is they've actually helped me with the relationship with Dolby. So I've worked with Dolby for a long time, but getting Dolby to act, Dolby actually participated and graded the montage for me, and that was a big deal. So what's the purpose of, of the new disc and, and how does it differ from your previous outings? Okay, so the new disc will be UHD resolution and an HDR. While there'll be a small section of SDR, 709 content, still UHD, the primary focus is HDR. And so with HDR, you know, with SDR we have decades of experience, so we know how to calibrate, know how to do things. With HDR though, it's still a learning experience. And so I'm calling this disc more of an evaluation disc than a calibration disc. So if you want to calibrate, you know, you, you, HDR you really need to use software like CalMan and a, a pattern generator and LUTs. Uh, but then with this disc you can actually evaluate. So uh, we'll get into the disc in a moment, but we're at an LG event, so let's talk about the LG TV and, and the input that you've had into the TV and what was that? Okay, so like uh, since we've started this project, I've been providing LG with advanced copies of test patterns uh, in the, from the prototype stage up until the finish stage. For example, one of our patterns, you know, with BT2020, they changed the location of chroma. So years ago, we did an article on the chroma bug. So we've had patterns to identify the chroma bug, but this is a new iteration of that bug. And so at 2020, the location of chroma is different than it was before. And so using the old 709 method it results in a half pixel delay. So you vertically shift uh, delay between luma and chroma. And so LG and everyone else has this problem built into their TV, by, but they were able to fix it by giving them the pattern in advance. And your patterns are actually going to be part of the TV when it comes to market? No, uh, they've actually got their own internal pattern generator, so our patterns are separate. Okay, so there, there may be some confusion over that, but obviously with the demo that, that you've been running here. So just to make that clear that when the LG TV comes to market, it'll be their test patterns, not yours. That's correct. So yeah, the LG has its own built-in test has its own has its own built-in pattern generator, and with that, they can design custom patterns. Now, I thought about the idea of whatever patterns they design in the TV, I could also include on a disc or a future disc or as USB downloadable patterns. But for now, all of our past test patterns are unique to us and only available on the disc. No, some of your test patterns aren't really unique, and I saw some things there, and I'm thinking, oh, this is going to make my life so much easier as a, as a TV reviewer, being able to evaluate TV. So maybe you could quickly take us through some of the highlights that are going to be on the disc. So on our new disc, some of, some of the things we're doing with HDR is HDR, some of the displays behave or change behavior based on the metadata, uh, how bright the content was mastered at. So what we've done is for every test pattern, we're including five versions of it. One at 10,000 nits, 4,000, 2,000, 1,000 nits, and 600 nits. That way you can check if the display changes behavior based on the test pattern. And in some cases, that's really only a metadata difference. The pattern's the same, but on other patterns, we actually design them for each nit level. So in the case of like a ramp, the ramp is only going to go up as high as the uh, coded nit value of that pattern. So what are the, some of the unique things in the patterns that people can look at and then see whether their display is performing correctly or not? Okay, so some of the unique things we've done in test patterns is with all of our ramps, we've added a what we call modulation. It's a strip that goes down the center of the ramp because normally if a ramp clips, it's kind of hard to tell where the actual clipping point is. So by having this modulation, you'll actually see it. So if, if, if my finger represents a ramp, code values you know, go up one at a time. Well, the modulation actually does this. So you might clip here, but because it's showing a couple values below, you'll get a better idea of where it's actually clipping, if that makes sense. Uh, you can look for chroma upsampling errors, 2020 chroma upsampling. You can check for resolution. So for our resolution patterns, because they're sinusoidal, we'll actually limit those to nits as well so they don't hard clip. So when do you think your disc is going to be available? When, when can we get our hands on it and when can we evaluate it? So the disc was supposed to be available about a year and a half ago, but like everything else, it takes time. But right now I've got a, a dozen patterns left to encode, which I hope to finish up into this week, end of next week at the latest. And then authoring starts, and so we hope to finish authoring by the end of January, replicate in February, and then be on the market by March. But you know, things slip by a couple weeks, but the goal is to have the disc out by the end of March. Okay, well that sounds fascinating. Um, we'll have a discussion off camera and maybe we can get you on our podcast when the disc comes out and we can go over it in a little bit more detail. Oh, absolutely, yeah. When the disc comes out, Don and I would both be happy to be on a podcast and discuss it. In fact, there really is a Don Munsell. Everyone, because I'm the one that goes to all the trade shows and people are like, is Don real? Like, he's, he's real, yes. <laughs> well, Happy New Year and thank you very much for your time. Well, happy New Year and thank you.